Today we are gonna go ahead and make an amazing backdrop for this Amazon light box. Let's get started. One tool that I use all the time is this light box. This is actually just an Amazon Basics light box. We got the largest ones because most of the time my products are a little bit larger, but they do come in different smaller sizes too. Uh, this is 24 inches by 24. So let me show you how easy it is to pop this up and get this going. So they even have this little pouch on top that holds all of your um, like power cables. I like to open it up on its back first because it's just a little bit awkward if you don't. This is your front screen. And then this is your normal little pad inside. And then it's all white. Except for ours is a little dirty at the moment. <laughs> now let's turn it on. It's just that easy. I definitely get a lot of shots using just the plain white. But after, you know, doing a whole series of just all white backgrounds, it can get a little boring. I looked countlessly at different companies that made backdrops. They were just all ridiculously expensive. So I kind of just did some research and figured out how to make my own backdrops for like a fraction of the cost. My backdrops, once I'm done, I believe I'm like under $30. Plus I made it myself and make all of the specific colors I want so that I can fit whatever I'm shooting. I'm gonna grab all my supplies. We're gonna head to the backyard and get started on these. So this is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, these are big canvas drop cloths that I've painted. Um, I've got different colors and looks a little messy here, but once you throw like a big shallow depth of field on this, you can't see all the details. So it just makes a really good background for all of your products. I've got pink, and today we are gonna do another color too. What we're using is I buy these six by nine job cloths. These are like 13, $14 at Lowe's. I'm buying the cheapest ones. They have heavier weighted ones. I'm literally buying the cheapest one. We're gonna go ahead and cut our six by nine drop cloth into four equal quadrants. So, so real basic, I'm not doing anything special. My lines are not super perfect and clean, but it's literally fold it, cut it, fold it, cut it and you get a sheet that's about three by four and a half. Does not need to be perfect. When you're doing photography and when we're painting, we're not gonna be going all the way to the edge anyways. Not a big deal. Let's go ahead and go iron this to get as many of the wrinkles out as we can too. So for every drop cloth that I'm doing, I'm also ironing them first because, I mean, if you can see it, they're very wrinkly. And a lot of the paint gets a lot of the wrinkles out, but you can still tell. So I like to just give it a quick iron smooth it out the best I can. So once I'm done ironing, I'm going to take this outside and we're gonna set this up to get it all painted. Other things that we need to get. So we've got, these are just chip brushes, really cheap. These were like $2 at Lowe's. You're not gonna wanna do like normal painting with these, these are the cheap brushes. <laughs> I buy the cheap ones so that I can just toss them when I'm done. Um, don't have to worry about cleaning them up and it just saves a ton of time. They have four inch ones, but the four inch ones are literally like $5 a piece and these are like $2 a piece. So we're just gonna be spreading a little bit more. Piece of plastic to put down to protect your uh, surface. Next, paint. First thing I do with paint is I go to the paint department and I find their little cart that's the mistinted paint and it's all about 50% off. So I find these quartz and I just check the colors that they've already made. For instance, this is kind of like a little cream white color. It was half off for $9. I ended up getting two of them. This is kind of like a little mauve color. The rest of the colors, we just got some paint samples and I had them mix them into the paint sample size. These happen to just be on sale, which is so fantastic. Pick all your colors up this way. I pick out kind of a few different shades. I wanna get like a base color, like your whites, and then kind of add in a little bit of different colors. So you just you have a big range of your lights, mediums, and darks. You'll kind of get an idea once we actually do it, how it works and how flexible you are with colors. I also picked up this big bottle of white this is just tempura paint. This is like the cheap kid paint. This just helps like spread things out. This is $9, this is $3. This just helps make all your paint go further. 
we want lots of character and it doesn't really matter. Nobody's gonna care that you spent $20 on your paint. We're not painting walls, we're not painting, we're literally painting a backdrop that is going to be blurred out in the background of your photos. It doesn't need to be perfect. And in fact, you want it to be as imperfect as possible. On one of my backdrops, I even have a dog footprint because it was laying out drying and my dog walked through it. So if you look closely, there's little puppy dog footprints, but you cannot tell. If you have old paint lying around your house, use that. If it's glumpy and goopy, use it. But definitely have a big thing of white to just make everything spread and go further. You might as well make this go this far. Let's get everything set up and decide what our color scheme's gonna be. I got my handy church key. So let's just kinda open everything up. Just kinda like a little brown color. Yellow. Ooh. Creamy yellow. Okay, so I think like a yellow brown one. I know it's, this is kind of like a white color. Perfect. Looking at all my colors, I think I'm gonna do like a yellow themed one. So we've got kind of like this mustardy color and then like a really like ivory and then a little soft yellow and then this brown color. Now this is the fun part, dumping these out. We're gonna get our white and we're literally gonna just start dumping. And there's no rhyme and reason to this, guys. Like, and this is where this white comes in, because you want, like, if you see how much open area there is, this just helps spread the paint out further. There's our brush. All right. It's really hot out here, so of course our camera overheated. So we're going to cell phones because supposedly they're more reliable right now. And this is the part where like, if you're starting to not like what you're seeing, like, okay, I'm pushing some white in, um, add more colors of what you want it to look like. We're just doing funky little shapes. We're just doing, we're moving it in weird directions. Now I'm just kind of like throwing just different textures in. Like I'm really like playing and schmopping and Go back to your kindergarten paint days. So I'm really liking that like mustard color kind of there. So I'm just gonna throw in a little bit more. My camera's back, decided to cool off a little bit. So we're just kind of throwing some paintbrushes down and I'm doing some weird funky brush strokes and just kind of blending this. Um, and I'm really liking how this is turning out. It's gonna look so great. Um, I'm really liking the pop of the mustard kind of coming through, but it's still kind of pretty subtle. So this should be a good pop of a little color behind some pretty flowers. So we're gonna go ahead and let this dry now and uh, come back and see what it all looks like. Okay, it looks like everything is super dry and ready to go. It super helps that we live in Central California and it's ridiculously hot all the time. Let's go pull this up and put it in our light box and see what it looks like. So everything's dry, have it all back in the house and I'm really excited to pop it in and see how it looks in the hair. So another reason why I love this light box is because it makes my life so much easier. The lighting's perfectly already calibrated and set up in there. I can just plop in any of my products when I take it back to the computer to edit, it just goes insanely quick and easy. So I use the Aperture Priority on my camera, which is the little AV on the dial on top. <laughs> so it just makes everything so easy and it just looks super beautiful when I'm doing all my photography and makes editing just like really quick. It's all exactly the same. So when I take my stuff into Lightroom, I can do batch editing and create presets and just do it all. And it makes it so fast and easy for me. Let's get our backdrop and see what it looks like inside. One thing I'll talk about too real quick is um, how I attach my backdrops. So I started out using just simple binder clips. The back of your bar Lightroom, it has this kind of like this fabric-y plastic sheet that comes down. It's got a little bit of a, um, like a rod in the back. So it has a very easy place to sit there and clip stuff onto. It doesn't have to be super secure. It's just laying down on there. All right. So the reason why I don't paint to the edges too is because it kind of folds in here. This is actually bigger than my box. So it kind of folds and concaves out on the sides. So it's really not necessary to get the entire thing painted.
Okay, so we got it in here and we're gonna go ahead and kick this bad boy on and take some pictures. Let there be light. <laughs> You look great in there. Did you want to take a picture? No? You want to get out now? Whee! Thank you guys so much for walking alongside me as I made a new backdrop. And can I just say, I am so thrilled with this yellow. I love how it turned out. I love all the texture. Be sure to comment below and let me know what colors I should do next because I've got quite a few more backdrops ready to go and ready to paint. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget about that notification bell because you know you want to hear when I've got a new video. Right? Right? You want to hear? You want to you want more videos, right? You got to know by hitting the bell. Or you don't get to know. And don't get to know about cool things like cool backdrops that now you get to make all on your own for a fraction of the cost. And now I'm rambling. A lot of ramble, ramble, ramble. Yeah. Can I be done now? <laughs>